And welcome to the Truth to Power Show. And my name is Beverly D. And I have Ron March from the Ron March Show with us today. As always, every Wednesday, at 6 p.m. Ron Sanders. Ron? Yes, Beverly, I'm here. Okay. December the 3rd, 2014, I am here. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Did you enjoy your vacation? I enjoyed the vacation. Um, I took everything in Ferguson in a pace that I knew would happen. But on the way to uh, today's session, I heard the local local news talking about the New York uh, situation, a decision, and I am sick. I am really sick. And I'm not angry at New York because it's only a replay of Ferguson. I'm angry at our so-called Negro leaders that we have in the city. And they're going to be blasting all week across the country. And I, I changed my mind on my topic tonight. I think we need to get real serious tonight rather than uh, hashing what we knew was inevitable. You, you understand what I'm saying, or do you agree with that? Well, what happened, first tell me, what happened in New York? Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Beverly, Beverly. I haven't the, seen uh, no, no television or anything. All right. Well, you, I know you're sitting down. If not, I'm going to knock you down when I tell you that the police approximately in April saw a black man selling loose cigarettes on the street. And they approached him and argued with him, called for backup. Literally, man, he was 350 pounds, about 6'6". Oh, six. yeah. I see, okay, they, I've seen that. I've seen that. Someone sent me that on uh, Facebook. Well, the grand jury, the autopsy said that it was definitely a homicide. The chokehold that's illegal across the country was used to subdue him. And all of this is on camera. Yeah. Well, they saw out of their wisdom to not indict the police officers. Uh, and um, um, there'll be no, there'll be no ch- trial. The officers were justified in what they did, which is a complete turnaround from the grand jury uh, process across America that's historically been used to indict undesirables. But this time that we've seen it three times now, we saw it in uh, Florida with Zimmerman, we saw it in Ferguson with Brown, and now we're seeing it again in New York, and I believe the gentleman's name is Chapman, I'm not really sure. I didn't want to read it or look at it because it only incites me. And I don't want to go off on the deep end and have bad, you know, don't want to feel bad about the whole situation. However, when you turn on the radio and listen to our our voices, let's call them that tonight, our voices, that's your talk show uh, uh, Negroes and those that are on the news uh, white news and the black radio talk shows, they're so far out of time with what's going on that it's a disgrace that they even open their mouths. I heard uh, the female on WCHB to, coming in today make a, make a comment that this is almost like the Dred Scott era and the Dred Scott case, what they're doing to us. Well, I, 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 I wanted to cry when she said that because it proves my uh, uh, theory that every – now listen to this carefully because it's going to hit you like it's going to hit everybody. Every educated individual in the United States of America that has any type of certificate, uh, notice, diploma, PhD, master, whatever they were given for their efforts to get the education, the bottom line is they are stone idiots, every one of them. There are little idiots that don't get a lot of education, and then there's some big idiots that got the PhD. 
you're only been trained. You, you don't get educated. You don't you, you don't get any any knowledge of self. Public schools only kicks out information to make you a better slave that you can serve your master. Okay. And it's coming out now because when we need some information and language and some direction in this crisis of killing black boys that's been going on for years, no one seems to know other than let's pray and march and go to church. And we've been doing that for years. And to sit and listen to them run this BS, I mean, it's, it's bad to be an idiot. We all know that. But when you don't know you an idiot and still get the favors and benefit from the system, you're dangerous because you live among us and you can hurt me either with your mouth on your programs or maybe you just literally come out and do something nasty to people like me, not me as Ron March, but people like me, because we are jeopardizing your positions of comfort that you have obtained through education, monies, bootlicking, whatever you want to call it, to get to those high positions, and now you are useless because the wagon has already caught up with the horses and you're no longer pulling us in a direction that they wanted you to do it. And I am sick, not at the Europeans, because they're only doing what they tell us they're going to do. If I say tonight, and I'm going to say it now, the only reason that Obama's president, the only reason is because they knew that this type of information would be coming out, and they definitely didn't want a white male in the White House. Because now we'll really see how stupid and dumb and out of touch they are. So let's throw a nigger in there and let him take the blow. Now, all of that is real ugly talk. And y'all may not like me saying it, but I don't give a damn. I'm tired of this madness, and the madness is coming from us. How dare that that talk show hostess mention in her conversation Dred Scott when she knows nothing about the case. She's never read the case. All she can talk about is what they taught her in school. That's all that she can talk about. She never took time out out of her brilliance and smartness to pick up a book or go online, pull up the case, read the opinions of the case. The Dred Scott case is the most powerful case that ever happened to black America. It's one of the most perfective cases that's ever happened to black America. Because it was revealed under no uncertain circumstances that the white man cannot do anything for us. And we can't do a damn thing for him. Dred Scott case proved that no black man can ever be a citizen of the United States of America. Never. 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 And we have fought, struggled, marched, begged, and then they're on TV today. One cat called up and had the audacity to say, since we're paying for the police officers, can't we stop making payments so they'll stop killing us? She had no answer. She said it don't work like that. I hit the radio. I told her, I hope her jaw was right there. I slapped the radio. God, go. Oh. And this is what burns me up. It's not what happened in New York. It's not what happened in Florida and, and Dred Scott. I got this information back, and I just pulled it up. Before we started, Bev, let me make sure I got it here. Yes, I do. I pulled this information up on a, 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 a young man of color. His name was Vincent Chin. Vincent Chin. And it happened in Detroit. And I'm going to give you a year. 
1989. Are you familiar with Vincent Chin? Yeah, that's the one that where they, the, the father and son killed him and they were at a bar or something. Yes, father and and uh, a son-in-law. Okay. Killed him. Robert Evans, an auto worker, beat him with a baseball bat. Never saw the inside of a jail. It came out that he was a knight of Columbus, a fraternal order that's that's booming today, just like the DPOA, Department of Police, Order of Fraternal Order of Police. These fraternal orders have sworn oaths to uphold United States of America, not United States, not the original Constitution. They are sworn to uphold the 1871 Constitution. And if you have to have a strong police force if you're going to create a de facto government dictatorship. But you're going to make it look like a democracy. You can ask those individuals that have outlets for news, or you can ask your colleagues, what is a de democratic government? Where have you seen one? Has it ever worked? And why are we killing all over the earth to spread democracy when we don't have any idea what it is? So, Bev, I'm going to throw it right back at you. Do you have, can you give me a definition of democracy? Okay. Uh, well, you told me, well, Go ahead. I, you, I don't want to, I ain't trying to put you on the spot. But I, I, I <laughs> but I am. Democracy. The only definition for democracy is mob. M O B. Mob rule. He who has the big stick rules. That's all democracy is. Nothing else. They'll say majority rules for democracy. Okay. If I got two hundred people, three hundred people in a room. And I got a, 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 a Uzi. Who runs that room? Who dictates what happens in that room? The majority. Who is the majority? Ron March. Why is he the majority? He's only one person. He got a Uzi, fool. <laughs> that makes him the majority, and everyone else must adhere to his commands. So they got police stations all over the United States. Most of them is in the urban areas or close to the urban areas. All of them zero in on the urban areas. Why? If democracy is, it will, will prevail, you must show force. Why is it? I got to run this, man. We got all them niggas. All over the United States, grabbing a microphone, legs crossed, talking out of side of their neck about what's going to happen next, and have no idea. You know, you just can't keep throwing apples into a, a, a boiling pot water and tell me you're cooking beans. <laughs> you can throw as many apples in there as you want to. You're going to have beans, I mean, apple soup or whatever. That's, I, that's the only thing I could think of fast, man, without cussing. <laughs> We, we we got it. We got the point. <laughs> All right. But if you study the Chin case, you have to ask, how is this possible? They didn't have cameras. They didn't have uh, cell phones. None of that was going on in Highland Park at the border of Detroit at a uh, an adult bar called the Golden Key, I believe it was that uh, this auto worker was upset because Japanese had taken over the market and they was laying off in Detroit. The, Ch the Chinese uh, brothers were celebrating a, a Chin's marriage. Later in the evening when everybody got, I guess, a little tipsy, conversation started with the Europeans 
Why are y'all over here having fun, taking our jobs and that type of thing? You racist, they went to, and they, whatever. So the two, uh, uh, Eben and his son, son in law, went out in the parking lot and laid for him and had a baseball bat. And when they came out when they at the end of the party, they laid for him over in the alley and beat the hell out of him, killed him. Went home, knowing they had committed a crime. Guess what they did, Beth? What? This is so important. This is so important. And and whew, and I'm I'm just sorry that you you you, you may not get the 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 gist. They ain't the gist. The the bottom of this. But I'm going to tell you what they did. They called a friend. They called a Shemansky. That's another Polish name in Detroit in the judicial system. Shemanskis. They called him over, sit down in the front room, talked about what they did. Shemansky, being a Knight of Columbus, put on his robe and tried him for a misdemeanor of, let's call it justifiable homicide. Nobody there but the two of them. Well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know how many was there. But they fixed it so that when the murder came out, they could not try him for murder because it would be double jeopardy. So is is this what that, well, no, they went to the grand jury this time, but you just explained that the grand jury. Yeah. The, don't oh, think about, or, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about the grand jury. I want to talk about secret orders. The only reason they got away with that was because they were in a secret order that took an oath to make sure that the government of 1871 would prevail by any means necessary. So since Chin was not a citizen, he was a person of color, Dred Scott, same thing. Same thing. He was a ward of the state. So the only penalty that had to be paid was what they call the poll rate. I think they call it the poll rate. Now you want to know what the poll rate is. Poll rate is what Richard Nixon had to pay for cheating and what even paid for killing him, which was every credit that he had used in the city had to be returned, such as his mortgage, his automobile, his children's college, anything that was in, anything that was in, in a corporate, not corporate, but a uh, more of a credit position, poll rate, poll man rate, he had to turn it back over. They did the same thing to Nixon when they went to impeach him. He had to turn over the poll rate, poll rate, which meant he had to give up all of his, uh, let's call them belongings. But you never go to jail. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. So, 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 I, look, so the guy, go ahead. the guy and his uh, son-in-law. They didn't go to jail, but they lost their house, their cars, and, and their credit cards and things like that. Yes, yes. But they never went to jail. The lady, the mama of Chin, appealed all the way up. Nobody could find out what happened in that room because they were both uh, fourth-degree masons, which is the highest you can go. They had the audacity to go over in the Middle East and bring a iman. Now, this is a little bit too big for most people because all secret orders graduate into Islam. All secret orders graduate into Islam. And when they get so high in the orders, they are told never pick up the Christian Bible again. How do you know that, Ron? I've been studying. Think you in a little trouble? No, because I, I was told when I was, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, never, never, never join anything. Because if you ever take an oath, they have a right to kill you. 
if you swear to an oath, which would be a, a God other than your own, you are in big trouble. You dig it? Right. Now somebody so she took it all the way up. Go ahead. Somebody said 33 degree is the highest. What, what did you say the highest was? Fourth degree. Tell them to listen. Listen. I'm talking about the Knight of Columbus. I'm not talking about the Masonic Order. Okay. The Knights of Columbus have a secret order. Their highest degree is four. Okay. Masonic order has uh, their highest degree is 33, and it's really four. But the reason that they go up is because they make money as they give out the degrees. They make money. It's a big money institution when it comes to the Masonic order. Okay. You dig it? So they're right with 33 degrees. They're right, but I ain't talking about them. Sorry, Masons. I'm talking about the Masonic, I mean, the Knights of Columbus. Okay? Now, what does that have to do with these issues that we're facing right now? I've been, I'm a Moor. And when you study Moorish science, you will find out through the history of who you really are, that you are not only, not only are you not a citizen of the United States of America, you own the land that the United States of America is on. Now, you have this... no rights being in any of... Go ahead. Is this... Everybody, or are you talking of just strictly more is the only one that owns the land? Well, let me go back and tell you what I think I said. I talk so much, I don't know if I told you or Texas, but all Moors are of color. Right. But all, pe but all people of color are not Moors. Oh, that's that. I, okay. All Moors are of color. But all people of color are not Moors. I've learned through my research that the mulatto issue was so devastating during the 1840s to the eight, no, 1830 to 1860 that there was a complete new nation of people in the United States at that time. And they labeled them mulattoes. Now, I'll ask you two world words, and, and if you hesitate, don't say no more, because I'll give you the answer. But I need to ask the question to say, <laughs> quit laughing, Bill. <babe. laughs> I, I have to ask the question so everybody can hear it. Okay. Who knows? And, oh, that'd be, that'll be good if I do it this way. So tell them to use the chat room. Who knows what a, cod room, a, a quad room or an octoroon is? A quad room. G R A D R O O N. Quad rune, I think that's how you. Oh, no, Q. Start with a Q, I guess. I don't know what it started with. But it's pronounced quad rune, and the other one is octoroon. Now, we have so many shades of color in our community, Bev, that it's we just don't know who is and who ain't. But right. what if I tell you? They have a degree of shades in their community, but they don't want you to know it, so they will call themselves Europeans when they're not Europeans. In other words, a European is blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. Period. Zero zilch. But when you go in these, these European communities, you find them all different ways. Black hair, black hair, black eyes. Black, everything. But the skin is white or light. You follow me? Okay. So they would rather, since the benefits and privileges in America being such a racist institution, they would rather be white than be a person of color. Now, Try to try to try to simmer down on that. Historically, that's where the Arab come from. 
the black natives in 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 uh, southern Africa fighting the Europeans coming out of the Caucasus Mountains across the Mediterranean. They fought in Upper Volta, V O L T A. When I went to school, they called it Upper and Lower Volta. What did that mean? They came along in night. 19- I'm looking at the number, 1943, and called it Middle East. (laughs) They created that madness. See, this knowledge and education and history, we need to know it. How can we call ourselves sovereign? How can we call ourselves human when we don't know nothing about ourselves? They saw fit not to teach us that. They gave us cowboy and Indian history, his story. And when I tell you, he had no, he was naked as a jaybird and dumb as a donkey when he came on this land. He meaning the European. And they come in mocking us because they knew our way of life was a way to go. When you see him in those uh, uh, hats, those pilgrims, what they call them hats. The old pilgrims just wear them old hats. They were not allowed to wear a fez, so we gave them permission to wear that ugly, ugly hat so we could make sure they didn't pass for us and they had to wear that hat as a marker of who they are. Mm-hmm. Just like today, I tell you that the president has to wear a tie when he's talking to what either are Republican or 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 um, corporations, he has to wear a certain tie. Right. Most people don't know that. It's got to be red or blue. Yeah. That's the only way they can tell. That's the only way they can tell what the conversation is coming out of his mouth. They can say easily, "Oh, that don't bother us," because he's talking to corporations. But he put that red on. Notice, notice what they did when he had that red tie on. And they showed him all over the earth. You have never, ever, 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 ever. You ain't seen that many presidents, but you ain't never heard of that. Where the earth was cheering because we had a black president. Or or an individual that had black blood. Had a quad quad room. Anybody answer the question about a quad room or octa room in your chat room? No, nobody has answered that yet. Tell them I'm going to give them five more minutes and I'm going to tell them what it is. <laughs> and that's surprising that they don't know it because every European knows it. If you think I'm lying, tomorrow when you go out there and find one, just ask him. May he be a drunk in the alley or may he be a, a school teacher? Ask him what an octoroon is and watch him start laughing. Oh, black hat. Oh. Yep, pilgrim hats. Yeah. Look up, look up octoroon. I know what it is, but I want to read the definition. Yep. O O Ock Oct just like eight. And rune R O O N. All right, Bev, here we go. We ain't through. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So here we are. I'm giving you history that they are all are taught in their private schools. That's why they strive. All of them. They talk about private schools. Only poor white people go to public schools. They know the public schools is a slave factory. Just, yes, yes. (laughs) Octoroon is a play by, oh, yeah. But but look at the color of them. White. Yep. Octoroon, Beth, let me give you the definitions. If you are quad room, you had one-fourth of your blood was black. Octoroon, one-eighth was black. So that means the octoroon was lighter than the quadroon. Octoroon and associated words, quarteroon, octoroon, and quintaroon are terms that historically were applied to define the ancestral ancestry of people of mixed race. <laughs> generally of African and European ancestry in the slave society of Americas. They didn't say United States, of Americas. Uh, But also within Australia, where the aboriginals are, 
to those, the aboriginals and Europeans. So the Europeans created this octoroon, quintaroon, quarteroon, all that crap. Oh, he you knows know what? what it, I'm, yep. no, I'm just saying, Ryan, I don't want to cut you off. You can start back up. But somebody in the chat room, I didn't uh, see it, but they did tell us what it was. Go ahead, though, for those that's not. All right. Why, why don't you read it? What did they say? Well, I, they, I really, but. Someone who Go possessed ahead. a quarter Moorish African blood, and then he said someone who possessed an eighth of Moorish African blood. But you told right us on. what you was saying. Yes. Yes. Is the one and the quadruple. Yes. Yes. Now you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. Can you and hear me? That, yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. We had that trouble last night, and we got to figure out why that happens. You know. Okay. Now, I read an article of old history that said. Now listen to this carefully. This is another. Question. Now, a woman who was blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin, they were trying to put her in slavery. And she said that she was 164th percent black. Her great, 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 great grandparents were black. Now, I, I'll ask this question. Why would she, being blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin, why would she want to be known as a black person? There's only one answer to that. And that is, white people were in slavery, not black people. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. White people were in slavery, not black people. When Lincoln said the Emancipation Proclamation to free the slaves. He did that. He did that. He freed the slaves. And we we scream and cry and holler and say it didn't happen. The date, I even had the big argument with uh, uh, the African Museum, and I'm going to go over there uh, this Friday. i got to do a piece over there, and I'm going to try to get in touch with the lady and see if she really knows what she was telling me and that was, it was the Emancipation Proclamation, the Jubilee. And I told her, no, the Jubilee was in 1848 when the, the Turner heirs won the Supreme Court ruling that all the land from Texas, Florida, up through the Delta, all the way up to Detroit, was owned by black people. That's a Supreme Court case, case number 191. And she said she had never heard of that. And she and I got into it about it. And But she was, I'm going to apologize to her, because now I've discovered that, that the, the Emancipation Proclamation did happen in 1861, when, or of 1864, at the end of the Second Civil War. And Lincoln freed the slaves. Yes, he did. He freed that peck of wood. <laughs> And they, in turn, begin to build what we are living in now, a democracy. And they knew that the only way they could keep it in place was through white supremacy and white racism. They have to have that in order to maintain the system. Oh, it's madness. Oof. You no, might cry, no, man. no, no. <laughs> Okay. So what you're saying is that in 1864, this this was when Lincoln beat the slaves, which the slaves were not of color; they were the European. Correcto. Okay. The the original so civil wars. Go ahead. We had two civil wars because you say this yes. is the civil war. Yes. There were two civil wars. The first one started in 1854. Okay. The combatants of that war were the Iroquois Confederation from the South and the Powhatan Confederation of the North. The Powhatan Confederation, the chief's daughter was Pocahontas. 
Now, notice right. how they made sure that everybody knows about Pocahontas. Why? Because she married a peck of wood. She was an octoroon. <laughs> Boy, this, this history is so good, it makes me bubble when I talk about it. She was an octoroon. Or probably that 160. No, no, she had to be either a, a quad rune or octoroon rune because she came from full, full-blooded Indian tribe which is no such thing as Indian. Negro, Indian, nigger, color, all that was made up by the system in order to maintain control. So he threw the mulattoes into this Indian concept and, treat, and treated them. See, we, we're going back now, Bev, to what you like to talk about, and that is European psychology. <laughs> <laughs> they set it up so that they could maintain control. They they told the Indians who who own land, the mulattoes, some of them own land because they was all in mix with them power tests. They was into the land. They told them that uh, you know we're gonna treat y'all a little better, and they started making treaties with them and stuff like that. Well, they couldn't do nothing with the South because the Air Corps told them we ain't buying it. You Pecker was ain't supposed to be here, and everyone we catch, we putting them in slavery. We don't care about Octoroon. No, I can't go that far, because I don't know how they dis- dif- differentiate it. But I know the America of the uh, United States is what they teach you in school. The United States, which was the 13 colonies, all Pecker Woods when it started. They did not have slaves when it started. So we can go all the way back to 1789 when they elected George Washington the first president. And I'll go along with that now and say yes. But he was president of 13 colonies. He was not president of the United States of America because there was no United States of America. It was only 13 colonies and El Maroc. El Maroc was everything in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess I could call say that. In the Northern Hemisphere, everything was El Maroc. The, the, the definition, that was a, a, a Islamic word, El Maroc. Muslim, Muslim word. Because mm-hmm. that's, our, that's our original language, M- Muslim, Islam. That's why we haven't, I'm going to get off the subject for a minute, but that's why we're having so much trouble out of the Middle East today, because they, they, they don't want us to realize that we are really the, the not Arabs, because that, that, but we're really the the Muslim leaders or the Moors of the earth. We are not not them over there. Uh, Eisenhower set that up in 1956 and created Morocco. There was no Morocco before 1956. He threw his wisdom and support from England and the Pope, knowing that we were were here. We black black America was here. They had to do that because they know we was gonna wake up. And once we wake up and see, we're gonna start doing something about it. That's probably why they that's probably over from over the last uh couple of years they've been shipping all these tanks over here and that's why we got the uh, occupied army that we saw down in Ferguson. Yes, you're totally correct. But all of that is a scare tactic because they're trying. Try, now, don't 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 take me that they won't use it, but they're trying to make sure that you don't disrupt. Remember what I said in the beginning: democracy can only be ran by force. Ain't no peace and love and friendship in a democracy. You got to be a big stick in order to be a democracy. Just like I explained, if I got a Uzi and I'm in a room with 200 people, I'm the president, I'm the executor, I'm the judge, I'm the jury. And that's a democratic process. But if I lay that gun down, (laughs) I'm in big trouble. Big trouble. You get it? I got it. All right. Now, the... uh, the So, wait a minute, wait, Ryan, before you go to the next level. Okay. So, the first Civil War was 1854. That's the one they don't talk about. They always talk about the Civil War with Lincoln. The first Civil yes. War was with the Iroquois. Uh, yes, and and the power tent, black, black on black. Okay. That we've been no, that we've been noted for ever since we've been on Earth. 
a trillion years, we've always been fighting ourselves. That's why we go through the cycle of the great year. Maybe I'll do a, a class on that. And okay. the great year is we go through all 12, all 12 seasons, you know, like uh, astrologically. Yes. And we are, we are now in age of Aquarius. And if you look up Aquarius, two things will come out if you do a good search. Number one, it's a cleansing period. The earth has to cleanse itself. That's why we're having uh, what they call it in climate weather, because the earth is doing its thing, and nobody can do anything about it. They had all those snowstorms up in Upper Buffalo and all that area, huge storms. Then all of a sudden, it started thawing out. Nobody thought about it, but the water came down uh, the, the Detroit River and all down through there. Now it's flooding Upper Michigan and killing all the fruit and all the, the growth up in that area is killing everything. So it's going to be a, a rough summer, or price-wise it's going to be rough because the food ain't going to grow right. Hmm. Just to give you an example, the, the su tsunamis that we have, those hurricanes and tornadoes, they're going to get worse because we're in the age of Aquarius, which means cleansing of the soul, of the heart. Cleansing. Everything that was behind closed doors is coming out. What's in the darkness is coming to light. Now, each each um, astrological era has a slogan. The slogan, when, when, when you saw the movie, The Robe, I think it was The Robe, when uh, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's and all that big stuff, they had to tell you that. Because it's their job to to educate us, but we don't know. We go there and, like idiots, eat popcorn and think we looking at something going to heaven. All that bull crap, because we idiots. But what they was telling us was Moses was in the era of Aries, the ram, and the slogan of the ram and Aries was, "I am, I am." And you you know what that was about? God, did somebody ask? I don't know. I don't know it, but you know what I'm talking about. I am. So after that, Pisces came in behind Aries. Pisces' slogan was "I believe." So what that meant was, all of these nations began to fight. The biggest wars and the most bloody combat went on during the age of Pisces. Bethlehem and all that crap over there was set up by these people who were fighting, murdering, and killing each other because they was in the era of I believe. But now we're going into the first cycle because uh, Pisces was the last cycle, 12. Now we're in the first cycle where it starts. And we're in the age of Aquarius, which is water, and which is cleansing this, and the slogan is, I know, K-N-O-W. Well, the European knew this because they raided the pyramids, got all of our our uh, uh, teachers, and they did all kind of stuff th during the age of Pisces. All of this knowledge was all, all over the earth. And you know I told you that Grand Canyon and Yellowstone National Park, they got areas that are a careened off because of some bad safety, bull crap. Ain't nothing wrong with them areas. But they got artifacts in there, and they were told not to destroy it. So they put them off limits. So they went in there anyway and saw and read those things and found out history, the future, not history, future, what's coming. The pyramids had what's coming. The Sphinx had what's coming. Down in Mexico, down in the uh, uh, Yucatan. They got more pyramids down in the Yucatan than they got in the Middle East. They were built by the Omic, the Wachita. They're all down in that area, down in there. They don't want you to know this because the knowledge is inside some of those pyramids and mounds. They were buried in there. So the European tried to prepare himself. That's the only reason that Obama is in the White House. It had nothing to do with anything other than 
the European did not want to be in charge when this madness of killing these black boys was coming out. And I'm telling you right now, I want everybody to hear this. Quit acting like it started yesterday. I, the first one to say that to me, I'm busting. Oh, we got to do something about it. You didn't do nothing a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years. They've been killing us all the time. Yeah, they were, uh, the they were uh, hanging, they were lynching and yes. hanging. Yeah. Yes, and they didn't go to jail because of the same thing I've been telling you. The secret orders had to build this government, and they had to do it through democracy, which is nothing but force, violence, and takeover. Rape, pillage, and murder. That's all democracy is. Because if, if I'm in that room with that Uzi, and I tell you to stand still, and you keep moving, I'm tearing your booty up. you out of here. Anybody else want to start something? I'm running this show. I'm the president, the judge, the juror, and the executioner. Democracy at its best. So oh. that's why yeah. we have. So that's why we have these. Uh, they're doing the law enforcement is doing what they're doing, and like you said last week, they're not there to protect us. They're there to protect the corporation. Yes, ma'am. And the corp, the first corporations. I'm glad you said it because it reminded me. The first corporations was the thirteen colonies. You could almost call the thirteen colonies Fortune thirteen, <laughs> rather than Fortune five hundred. At that time, it was Fortune Fortune uh, thirteen, and we gave them permission to do it because they were supposed to pay us. Listen to me, Ben. They were supposed to pay us. It's in the treaties that they will must pay us for setting up those corporations. And yes, we're supposed to work. Those that wanted to work had to work because it was set up that there would be peace in this land. That's how they got it started. And they were lying all the time. When they saw that they could get away with certain things, it began to build and grow. So from eight from 1789 to 1871, they had done the job, and they said, we're now ready to incorporate and go to the highest planes of democracy because now we got them where we want them. But what we got to do is we got to get them off the land and put the land in our name. So since we know where the the quintaroons, octaroons, quartaroons, all of that, one sixtieth uh, uh, rooms, all of, they know where it is. So they'll sick them on us, get us to sign crap over to them, or have male babies who are octaroon, and then give it back to Europeans, put it in their names. This is why the Iroquois said, no, no, we're not supposed to have sex with them. We're not supposed to have babies. Well, you know the answer to that. Same answer you see today. Males can't keep their pants zipped up. But then I read where the the white Europeans were rushing into um, north, up, uh, up north because they could have affairs with black people up, up north. They couldn't do that down south. But that's that's a whole nother research. <laughs> Because when I read this stuff, my head starts spinning, man. Fall out of the bed, dragging my big head across the room. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm telling you, it's, 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 I want to say it's too much, but I know my creator ain't going to put more up there than I can handle. Right. So right. I'm just laying it out. That's all I'm doing. It. I'm just laying it out. So we had these building of a United States of America. Now, have you ever read, I know you heard about the Prince, Machiavelli. Have yeah. you ever read any of that? No, no, I haven't now, read you know, Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Can you hear me? Ron Marge. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. Yeah. All right. Okay, now, since the Powhatan Confederation and the 
uh, uh, Iroquois were fighting. Machiavelli, who who lived in 1400, somewhere back there, way back, wrote this book called The Prince. The knowledge was there that they do today, because if all of y'all that don't know it, there's no difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. It's only a alternative to the end of success for racism. That's all it is. So all that bull crap running from one to the other is a bunch of bull crap. I've been telling y'all that last couple of weeks that the Democratic Party that all of y'all in is the most detrimental to your lifestyle and your children and your ancestors because they did all the dirty work. But now they can they figured out they can hide their dirty work by giving positions to niggas and then sending them niggas into the community to talk about democracy and freedom and all that trash that y'all get hung up in. Lord, help us. Somebody help us. However, what I'm getting at now is they had to set up a way to get a toehold in America. So what they did, they announced in, in, in your school books, they told you that the only civil war that was fought started in, I think, March of 1861. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was the ending or the beginning of the end of the real civil war of 1854. Okay. Now, Machiavelli talked to Europeans, which they called in the books, colonialists, frontiersmen, uh, pilgrims, they call them everything but Europeans and Beckwoods. They call them everything. But they, all of them are the same. And they come out of the United States. Got to keep that in mind. So what they did was supported both sides of the war. That's what they do today. Corporations support. The, when they have the uh, general election, you got a Democrat and Republican as the end result. The corporations support both. It doesn't matter, because they're going to win either way. It don't matter. Oh, that's but I've never come, heard of. That's how come, come Ron Paul, the independent, couldn't get in. That's right. And, and I was just getting ready to say, you've never heard of an independent getting in any strategic position of democracy. The green, the green slate that they run every year, they pass, they pass the, the, the high bar to, to, get, to get on the ticket and on the machines, but they ain't never won a position. If it, if it was, it was small. Let's put it that way. You dig it? So the, the concept of the confusion in the black communities is if you're not a Democrat or a Republican, you'll never win. Well, it was set up like that. So that the corporation didn't have to worry about choosing, because either way they go, they're going to win. So that concept was used in the Second Civil War of 1861 when they signed, when they taught us in school that Congress walked out. But they never told you there was a government prior to 1861. They never talked about that. They talked about the Whig Party. They talked about the Republicans, which was always there. They talked about another party, a Federalist. But they never talked about the government being already set up when they came here. The government was already here. We ran the government then. Everything was black then. And any octoroon, quatroon, a quintroon that got in the way, if they didn't act black, they were thrown into slavery and sent down south. You, you gotta, <laughs> are you with me, Beth? Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> so if you get any calls or any anything, you get. Oh yeah. Stop me and we can. Okay, we got a couple of calls. Uh, uh, hold on, let me see. Oh, they just went away. Oh, Here's one left. Let's see who this is. Uh, area code three zero one four zero three. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, this is uh Chris. Uh, uh, Ron. Good evening, Ron. How you doing, Beverly? I'm out, of Maryland. Hey, uh, Chris. How hey, you what's doing? up? Okay, go ahead. All bro. right. 
Hey, uh, me and my wife just found out we was reading today that uh, that they didn't they didn't even have uh, only they only thing they gave them was a fifty year mandate, and and uh, that that mandate was only for fifty years. So they use so everything like you saying everything when they came over here, they've been lying to us like just like they didn't even sign uh, uh, the treaty. They didn't even sign a treaty with us. Really, you know what I mean? So all this they've been telling us lies. They we on the treaty. Uh, what was that? What was we reading, babe? It wasn't a treaty. It was a mandate. And, and the mandate expired in 1836. Yeah, it said it ma- the mandate expired in 1836. And so they've been yeah. lying. It was because, like you said, the Morocco had control over the United States then. So, so, uh, so when they came over there, they gave them that. And so, like now, like they said, they all oh, they set up all this, and and now we in uh, they got all this mind, this manpower mind over us. And, and like yeah. and like Ron said, we got to be, we got to get with, we got to get tune with, uh, tune in with Allah. The true, the true self, because right now you believe in it is Jesus Christ and all that's coming to save you and all that. They, they, they. they you, 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 you better change your ways of thinking now, because like you said, the earth is cleansing, it's cleansing. Things are gonna die. The fruit's gonna die. And I come to find out that when, when the earth was was tropical, they had grapes big as your hand. Grapes, all that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They really, they really yep. had changed. Yep. They had changed the culture here, and and, and, it, and yep. it's going. It, it got to cleanse the earth because the true God that 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 that, that, that like Ron said, we was we was here. We 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 are ancestors of kings and queens that they don't want you to know about. Yes. So people people we, yes. we we need to understand. That's why he he's that's why Ron got power and giving us power. But we got to get it together, and that's all I'm gonna say. Yep. But now. Let me work with you real quick, you and your wife. I know y'all be doing some serious studying. That charter, a mandate, can be renewed every 50 years. It doesn't expire. Mm-hmm. You can renew it. Mm-hmm. You can renew it. Mm-hmm. Now, right. I'm looking, That's what and it's got to be signed. All right, hold on. It's got to be signed by a female moor okay. and a true European to make it extend. Mm. Now, mm. I'm going to ask you. I know you don't know the answer. It was signed last in 1987. Who was the black female that signed it? Do you have any idea? Who was the black female that signed it? Dorothy Chisholm. Dorothy no. Chisholm. Yes. Yes. Shirley. Shirley, Shirley Chisholm. Shirley, Shirley Chisholm, yeah. Shirley Chisholm. Yes, Shirley Chisholm and Ronald Reagan signed the treaty. Right. And they made a joke out of it because I think the day of signing was supposed to be a Friday, and Reagan said, I'm going to let everybody not belong to any country, and he waited the weekend and signed it Monday morning. So that, when he did it, they all made a joke out of it. Yeah. Yes. So it really didn't happen. So we were. <laughs> yes. It happened Monday morning. Yes, it happened. They signed oh. it Monday morning rather than Friday. But all the states didn't agree, though. They don't have to agree. The treaties were oh, okay. done by the governments, not by uh, the people. Cause there, okay. See, there was no state. We had territories back in them days. So the government, which we acknowledge, was the United States. So United States government had to sign it. Only United States. Mm. All right? All right. Okay. All right, man. Thanks for the call. All right. Uh-huh. You're welcome. All right. Okay. A bear is at the clock. Let's take a- you got uh, another call? Go ahead. Yeah. All right. We got- okay. All right. We're going to take uh, 661748. 661. Six, Ron? Yeah. Yes. Beverly? Oh, it's yeah. me, Ron. It's me, Beverly. It's Delray. Hey, How you doing, Ron? Greetings. Okay, I'm very good. Are you yeah, you yeah. calling me from... Uh, yeah, from okay. England, Are you calling... Yeah, do you have... Yeah, okay, question to you. Do you have a telephone with a California 
Area code. Because I keep I getting I, a phone call, but I can't answer it. I'm going to tell you what the number right. is in one second. But go ahead with your question. What you got? Uh, uh, go I ahead with your question. Yeah, I'm just, just saying um, everything you're putting out there about the Confederacy and everything, it's, it's, it's on point. And I just wanted to say this, and I've, I'm going to send this to you because I've, I've had a point of sending this to you. But um, have you ever heard of the papal vote that was issued by the, the church uh, into Contera? Uh No, I have not. I looked at that oh, information you, look, you, you sent me. Yeah. Yep. Well, I've, Go got, ahead. I've got some more. <laughs> I've got some more high grade stuff we run. Um, well, I'll just say. This, All right. Gonna, Go I, ahead. I, 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 I was going to put this out because it's 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 just worth being. Just to back up, it all kind of comes in what, what, what Ron was saying. And I think it's important that people have got to realise that when one's saying you've been here for a, lo- uh, a long time and, a, and a, a, a millions of years, and that land's always been your land. So I'll just say this. Yes. And I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, Alexander, Bishop and Servants of Servants of God, of the illustrious sovereigns of our very dear son, Christ Ferdinand, King of our very... Dear daughter Christ Elizabeth, Queen of Castile Leon. So he's come for the Europeans. Wow. Now. Okay. Now. Did you get an email? Wait a minute. Did you get an email from me about yes, the Queen? Yes, I did. did were yes, you aware I did. of that? I have a chance. Yeah, to some degree, yeah, that's why I find up putting this on it. Absolutely right. Um, you spot on. Now, I've not had a chance to read all of them yet, but I've read one or two things you've sent me, and I'm going to send you some more stuff. But yeah. The key right. thing is that you, the, the land over there, Ron, was funded on the uh, Christian religion. It's not, because I'm going to prove this just by saying this or not. And this was done in 1492. And it just says, um, okay. Divine Majesty and cherished of our heart, this ass- assertedly the perhaps highest that our times, especially the Catholic faith and the Christian religion, be exalted and be everywhere increased and spread, that the health of the souls be cared for, and that the barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to the wow. faith itself. Okay, let's keep going. Where are All right, All right hold up, hold up, hold up. That don't, you gotta, why don't you send me that and let me go through it, and I can give it on the phone so everybody can understand it. Your accent is, is heavy, <laughs> and it's difficult okay. to follow you. <laughs> okay, right. You know what I mean? So, so send that to me, and I'll work on it, and then I'll I'll bring it up as I do my presentations. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that good? It's, it's, yeah, that's fine, Ron. Cause I know you, I know you got, I know you got a a, a, a long wind, and you get to rapping, brother. You be talking for a couple of days. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 All right. So. It's time for me to get take a break. My engineer is saying to get out, get up, get up, and get out of here. So, okay. Bev, are you there? I'm All here. Right. Thank you, Carla. All right. So Thank we'll you, Carla. Back. I appreciate your call. We'll yep. come back in 10 minutes. All right, Bev. Thank you. Anybody that uh, would like to talk to Ron or ask a question, you can call 347 215 That's 347 347- Two one five eight zero four one. All right, uh-huh. all right. Okay. okay, so let's get started. We're going back. Wait a to minute. Wait, original. wait, wait, Ryan. Wait a minute. We have one caller before you start. Uh, area right. code nine four one four six two. Area code nine four one. Hello. Yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes. Um. Good evening. Good evening. Um. I just wanted to um before he, before uh, Mr. Marsh got started, if I can get his uh email address because I have some information I think he might be able to, um that he might be interested in because uh, you know I, I I want a lot of times I want to accumulate a lot of a lot of information but I can't go through it because I'm just so busy so you know I ain't no need to be holding it and keeping it all so you know. All right. Well. Let me. Why don't you hang up and I'll give it to you? Is that all you wanted? Nope. Yeah, right now. I may okay. have a comment or question later on in the show, but right now, yeah, that's all I want. Okay. All right. All right. We'll call back. I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. All right. Thank you, caller. Yep. Thank you. 
All right, that's good, Beverly. We should try and do that more in the in the show. Yeah. Because people will, yeah. So let's get that out of the way. Uh, my email address is Ron March Show. M A R C H. R O N M A R C H S H O W. Ron March Show at Yahoo dot com. Ron March Show at Yahoo dot com. And Bev, before we go off the air, let's remind me uh, we'll okay. do it again. Okay. All right. All right. So now we're going to come forward because we're going to get right into New York, Florida, and Ferguson. Okay. But first, I want to explain or get to the issue of the civil, the original Civil War, where the Europeans used a Machia Machiavellian concept to let them fight it out among themselves, which was the bloodiest war of Americans that they always brag about because you had blacks fighting blacks. And, and then when the war was over and the South won, uh, 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 the Europeans attacked the South because they didn't have to worry about the North because they had just lost and they knew they could whoop the South because they were injured and 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 depleted with money that's where these these loans come in and any more that considers himself a more will tell you that lincoln on that civil war against the europeans borrowed 25 million dollars in gold from the black nation the wachita nation okay i got i got doc i got documents on that how much did he? How much did he borrow then? Twenty twenty five million in gold. Okay. Twenty five million in gold, which worth is worth a trillion today, of course, penalties and everything. So once they attacked, now they set up. Uh, their government was founded. Their government, the original United States of America, was founded at the. At the bellum date, uh, maybe I can't say that. Yeah, I can. The at the bellum at the bellum gate uh, uh, date of 1861, and they claim in their history that taught us that Congress walked out. Well, they actually did, because the North in the fight, the South was in war at war. So since the North walked out, I mean, excuse me, since the South walked out. The United States attacked the South, and subsequently, they didn't win, but they signed treaties to stop fighting. That's where the problem lies. They signed treaties to stop fighting. And those treaties got us in all kind of trouble and that we all know about today. Okay. And meanwhile... Now, now you say they, they, they signed treaties to stop the fighting. Now... Uh, who was they? Was it Congress in the South? No. United States, the frontiersmen, the colonists, those Europeans that were in the 13 colonies, they attacked the South, which they called themselves United States. Do you, you get it? Or do you hear me? I got it. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. They they uh, attacked the South. Now they had I, I guess they had a government, but I from what I'm reading and what I'm getting information on, I can't break that down because once they started signing treaties, Lincoln was in power. But then when they killed Lincoln, that Johnson that took over, I don't know where he come from. I haven't I don't know. You, you see what I'm saying? He could have he could have been one of theirs. I don't I don't know. I can't answer that. But I do know this. They needed land because they wanted to expand uh, out from the thirteen colonies. They did not have to worry about uh, certain territories like the Indian Territory because they just got their butt whipped by the 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 uh, Iroquois and all the territories they didn't have to worry about because they was fighting each other. We've always been fighting each other. That's always been a way of life. 
And I can explain that, but we'll do it in another uh, setting, not tonight. Okay. But we've always fought each other, always, because there was nobody else here but us. Right. And we had to live. Okay. So now, with that European trying to set up this thing called democracy, he started to come up with rules, regulations, and local municipalities to set up rules. Now, the first rule he set up, he did not want his white people to go into slavery. So since Lincoln emancip uh, eman uh, uh, a proclamation and freed the slaves, they were literally free. The European slave was literally free because the black man had never been in slavery. Mm -hmm. By definition, because you can't be black and be a slave, because slave is a Slavic word for worker. And none of us are Slavic. Don't even know where Scandinavia, or not Scandinavia, uh, what's over there? Uh, Yugoslavia, wherever that, them, them Slavs come from. We don't know nothing about that. But they were coming here to the new land. And that word slave came from them. Because their form of government over there, wherever they come from, they was catching hell. I can tell you that right now. That's why they came here. That's why they unloaded the the uh, 13 colonies were sent in, because they unloaded the uh, prisons and sent them over here and all that kind of stuff, which is another setting. But I want to bring that up to let you know that we're talking about that era, that time period, Frank. So... They set up these rules. Now, the best rules that worked for them that they put into the law books, y'all got to understand, no one on earth has caught hell with white supremacy, white racism, more than the black man of color in the United States. They will argue you down that slavery was everywhere. Lacky, yacky, yack. Just, just tell them to shut up and sit down somewhere. Slavery everywhere, there was, a, there was a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel for slavery. You could work your way out of slavery. You could buy your way out of slavery in, in, in certain areas. They had all types of rules and regulations how you could get out of slavery. But once they started that slavery process in the United States, you could never get out. We're in slavery today. Never got out. And the reason we're in slavery today is because they started these legal, quote unquote, and I'm using the word legal loosely because there's a difference between lawful and legal. Legal is who has the big stick. And we know that the Europeans had the big guns and all of that. So they were ruling with democracy. So they set up in their, in their towns rules and regulations so that black people were put on the books that they had to have strict rules in order to come into their towns. And this is where Jim Crow, this is where black codes were used. Those codes came from over in the uh, Scandinavia, over in them countries. They brought those codes, same codes, over here and modified them and put them in on the books. Nobody else had, had, had legislation. They could take you off off the street and throw your butt in jail without a trial because the law said they could do that. They had rules where if it was a two or more at, after the sun go down, you had to have a lantern so they could see who you were. You should read some of those codes and that they had, black codes, and then you should read what you know about Jim Crow. That's when they used institutions to set up where you couldn't do it, anything if you were of color. The rules for death were so strenuous that they were lynching, legally lynching black people. It wasn't no law against uh, somebody spread the rumor that the nigger raped a white woman. And they go after they get drunk, they, they get drunk and go get a thousand peck of woods and then raid the jail and drag him out, hang him, cut off his Johnson, and then tied around the neck, all kind of crazy Woo, voodoo stuff. They did it. History. Read their history. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Read the history. And we today are striving to be like them. 
That's how crazy we have become because we go to their schools and we're caught up in their privilege and benefit process, processes. Where the more you act like them, the higher you can go. I can never forget when I when I run for office, all them uh, <laughs> Negroes, I'm going to call them Negroes, all them damn Negroes say, well, Ron, you know, you're a good guy, but you're too militant. What can you say now? Because you ain't got nothing downtown in Detroit that's militant. Nothing downtown in Detroit that'll talk back to them peck woods. And you told me I was too militant. It's 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 madness, but they, you got to give them credit. They knew what they were doing. That 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 damn what you would call British or not British uh, European psychology is a dangerous process. You got to learn what it is. So coming out of 1865, when they said that the war was over, they said their war was over. All the way up to 1899, it was home run on all black folks that owned land in the South. They were trying to take it. But it's ironic that everybody listening to me knows a family or have land in their families today in the South. So how could we have been slaves? Think about that. You got land in the South that you're looking at me, that you've been on that land early 1800s. Been there all the time. Peck was taking them, don't get me wrong. They'll pass rules in those particular municipalities that would take your land, which is all illegal. So they had to take the word alodio out of the dictionary so it could never be used again because alodio means you own the, the land lock, lock, lock what they call lock, stock, and barrel. That's why we got away with lodial titles for a period of time in Detroit. Packerwood in Detroit didn't know what a lodial title was. And then when the great white father saw what we were doing, he said, oh, no, well, stop it. And all he said was, we're not prepared to take that type of paper any, anymore, something like that. And the law of the register of deeds is you can file a, a, you can record, not file, you can record anything that you own in the register of deeds. You can put it on a piece of dollar paper. But they came up with rules, regulations, so that they would make it difficult for you to protect your property and land. Most of the blackies in the South today, they're catching hell because the rules that they set up in these municipalities, they can't either understand it or they got to go get a lawyer, and the lawyer's a crook because he doesn't pay, had an oath to uphold democracy and the queen. If he steps out of line, they're going to kill him. Oh, Lord, help me, somebody. Help me. <laughs> Still with me, Beth? <laughs> I'm here. I'm downloading. <laughs> All right. So, after murdering and killing and lynching, coming out of 1865 all the way up to 1899, they had to go into, that was phase one of the corporation structure of democracy. Steal the land. Damn, something just... just Oh, man, something just hit me. I'll have to come back to it. But I've mentioned the three badges. Did I ever talk to you about three badges, Beverly? I don't think so. What's the three badges? Oh, man. Lincoln set up a process during the first Civil War, and there was another name for it, but when the European took over in Post antebellum, he changed it to three three badges, and what it meant was number one was to free the white man, free the slave. Emancipation Proclamation was the first badge. Second badge, the the preachers, not Christians, not not uh, Catholics, none of that crap, none of that bull crap, none of that. But the teachers.
teachers were supposed to teach the Moors how to save and preserve their land. That was badge number two. And badge number three was they was going to teach us how to get our land and monies because the European had signed the treaty to pay us to be on our land. And the three badges disappeared. And I'm searching now for the original name to do some in-depth research so I can bring it to you from the original Lincoln prospect that I I, had. I don't know what happened, but I, I can't. I don't remember what it was, but I did remember the three badges, and I got to find it. Okay, now badge number one was to free the white slaves. Yes. You don't say it that way. Badge number one was proclam- uh, uh, what is it? proclamation. Emancipation proclamation was the first badge. And that's why they called it that, because they didn't want you to know that they were freeing white slaves. You took for granted, since they showed you them pictures and put you in their schools, that they freed black slaves. <laughs> Bad number, number one was Emancipation Proclamation. Bad number two was there were teachers, and we can, we can call them preachers, that were supposed to teach us how to be, how to live, how to get on the righteous path, the path of righteousness, how to build us a nation, know our birthright, know our ancestors. All of that was supposed to be taught from the preachers. And number three was the, the register of deeds where our land was, is, and will always be, and the monies that are owed us from the Europeans for being here. Hmm. Now, you can see how far we are away from that. Because when they jumped on the preachers and made them join the Ecclesiastic Corporation, it put the preachers into a trust. And then they set up rules and regulations of the trust. And if they step out of line, they can throw their butt in jail. And the register of deeds is a joke. And they got it loaded with niggas that don't know what the hell they're doing because the Peckerwood told them, if anybody come down here looking like Ron March, look up on this sheet. If what he's asking for is on this sheet, tell him we don't take that. Get out of here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's 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 madness. Yeah. But wow. I... I'm not worried about it because the creator's going to straighten it out. It ain't for me to straighten out. It's for me to wire you up as to what you're getting ready to get into, and it's coming. So if you don't know what's happening, they don't tell them what you're allowed to do. I ain't afraid on what's coming. I'm afraid of these Negroes and colored folks that don't know a damn thing, and they're going to get lost in the shuffle. All right. So the first phase of democracy was set up by stealing our land. Second set was set up from 1999 to 1950, excuse me, from 1899 to 1945-55 when they set up the money process. That's when they set up the New Deal, 1933. When they changed up everything set up the redemption, all of this was done. And then we're in the final stages of his power, and we can call it whatever you want, but we're in the final stages. Now, the final stages, what's bring, what brings us to Florida, New York, and Ferguson. Now, I want everybody to go online and let me tell you how I do it. You go to Google, and mm-hmm. you ask Google a question, and Google will go and find the answer. For example, I want you to type in Zimmerman, for example, prosecutors held back in from evidence from the Zimmerman trial. Boom! Shit have come up all over the place. Mm-hmm. The trial was fixed. Go back and put in evidence withheld by prosecutors in the Wilson grand jury case, and then step back. Boom! It'll come up. And last but 
not least in this. I haven't done it yet on Chapman because I know what the answer going to be. I call him Chapman. I'm not really sure of his name. But you look at that. In order to get those types of convictions, those types of, of rulings, they have to cheat. Yeah. yeah. And I just love the cold cock one of these. Damn. I saw that nigga on TV today, uh, uh, Charles Barkley. He should, oh, go home and just wow. yeah. he should go home and just do something to himself. I don't know what it is, but he never should come out again. He's going to try to make some sense out of the rulings from these courts. And it's clearer than a bell. Let me, Beverly. He's a, he's, a prime, he's a prime example of what you just been talking about. Uh, yeah, one of them, one of them mulattoes. Psych- psychology. Yes, 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 yes. Let me. I got something that man, man. I'm telling. You, I got something. From last night that I did. Okay. I'm going to tell you about it. Okay. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell. You can spell that word. Lawrence O'Donnell. O-D-O-N-A-L-D-N-E-L-L. O'Donnell. On his program on MSNBC, he did a uh, his last word. When he does his show, he got something called last word. Mm-hmm. And the last word was the law that was used to free Wilson in Missouri. Now, I'm confessing to you, Beverly, and your audience, that I came on the, your show and told you that that boy would be set free because the law of Missouri says that a police officer, once he identifies himself as a police officer, and you turn and run, he has a right to shoot you. And if he gets you in the back, well, so be it. You remember right. when I said that? Yeah. I was half right. In night, now listen to this, man. In 1979, the state of Missouri passed a law that I just quoted to you. Mm-hmm. If you have a suspect, and you don't have to worry about your life being in danger, but if you identify yourself as a cop and tell him to sit down, stand up, go around, whatever, and he takes off and runs, you can shoot him. Okay. So I, that's what I read. But what I didn't know was in 1985, the United States Supreme Court ruled that that law was unconstitutional. Right. It's still on the books in Florida. I mean, uh, Missouri. It's still on the books. And if you're tried by any court for murder and they use that, I mean, for, you know, uh, that you got killed and you got to fight them and you don't know the law's been changed, they ain't going to tell you because they'll say, as they always do, I'm not here to teach you the law. Right. The law was used to free the, the officer. He read, if you, when you go get it, you're going to read the transcripts under oath, what went on behind closed doors. He read that. Okay. He read what went on behind closed doors. And what he read was the two prosecutors, uh, 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 ADA assistants, the two assistant prosecutors who tried the case of the grand jury for the Brown family read to the jurors the first portion of the hearing mm-hmm. that that um, Wilson had the right to shoot to kill him. Okay. They read that old unconstitutional law okay. and made it clear. Was there any question? Made it very clear. Then when they called Wilson up, who was already primed and trained what to say, yeah. He was up there for four hours, and he was cross-examined by a crooked attorney who was in on the on the madness, and he said all the right things, just like he did on the TV interview. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. So since they since he got uh, freed or off on that, 
which was an untruth, can he be tried for when uh, what the uh, court said in 1985? Well, I would guess or surmise that it would be double jeopardy to try him on the same charges. That was similar to to Vincent Chin's situation when the Shemansky family went out there and smoked cigars and drank whiskey and had a trial in his in his front room and found him not guilty. But better yet, they found him guilty of a misdemeanor. But it. I mean, but the jury was was the information was kept back from the jury. Okay, who's gonna tell? Who's gonna bring charges that the information was held back? What about the attorney of Michael Brown? The attorney of Michael Brown was the two prosecutors. Michael Brown was a victim. You don't need an attorney if you're a victim. He's only there to in your best interest. If you are a plaintiff, you need an attorney to present your case. Now, had he been indicted, the Brown attorney could have cross-examined him and brought out everything. But since they squelched it before there was an indictment, how is he going to get him on the stand? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's all, it's all by design. And when you look up, uh, I did that before I left home, and I had it. I get nervous. I can't find nothing when I get up up here. Mm-hmm. But if you look up uh, prosecutors hold, withholding evidence, just play with that. Mm-hmm. They'll bring up is one uh, 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 company out there that keep track of all of that kind of stuff. They had upwards of at least twelve cases that they would they charged the prosecutor for withholding evidence. Mm-hmm. Now, this, this same prosecution department down in Ferguson used, uh, did you, all right, let me ask you this first. Did you know that the autopsy guy that did the autopsy on Brown from the family, they gave him the first indication that there was some foul play and hanky-panky, he was an imposter. He wasn't even. He, he was not a autopsy guy, whatever you call him. The company, the city knew it, but they didn't say nothing, which is okay. They didn't say nothing. Crump should have did some research, but Crump thought he was hiring the doctor, and the doctor brought the assistant, and the assistant did the autopsy, and the doctor wasn't there. But the assistant's uh, a charter says he has to have a doctor present Every time he does an autopsy, but the doctor was not present. So somebody asked the question, can we bring charges against him? Guess what the judge, they had a judge from Missouri. Guess what that judge said? And did not blink an eye, Beth. Beth. She said, no. She said, no, we don't want to bring him to court. Because if he, if he loses his license or, win, or if they win that he's an imposter, we got X number of people in jail today from his autopsies, and if he's found to be a fraud, we got to release them people, and nobody wants to do that. She said it on TV. I'm looking right in her mouth when she said it. She said no, no, nobody, nobody wants to go and challenge that. No, because they know it to be true, and all the people that are in jail by his autopsies They have to be released. Now, one guy, so they say, that that he did because he killed his grandfather, they released him, and then he went home and beat up his grandmother. That's how they covered themselves to say, we don't want to open up no more cases. I don't know that to be true. But they shot some Peckerwood picture up on the screen and called his name and said that he was convicted of, of his granddaddy and when we checked, the autopsy wasn't right, so we had to release him. And we don't want to try him again because, not, no, no, not him. Once we released him, he went home and beat up his grandmother. He killed his granddaddy, and then he went home and beat his grandmother. 
Now, I don't know I don't know nothing about that, but they put that on TV as they covered themselves that they did not want to open up another case because it might cause too much trouble, especially releasing these crooks back out in the street. It, you want to cry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. We have you almost want to cry. Call. You want to you take a call or you want to um, yes. wait? Yes, go ahead. Yep, I'll take it. Okay, area call oh. 404 Good evening. How are you? Hello. Hello, how you doing? Great. Good. good, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you sound like uh, you're in a... Telling me sound like he's in a tunnel. I don't... <laughs> we can barely uh, How is that? I apologize. I That's a little better. Yeah. I'm trying to walk around. How's All that? right. That's a little better? That's a little better. It's a little okay, better. Okay. You still sound like you're in a tunnel. All right. Uh, how go is ahead. It? I can hear you. That's okay, much better. Okay. 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 Well, I just now. wanted to say I've been listening to the show, and um, I happen to know uh, Ron March, and i like to say to you that I really appreciate what you're doing, first of all. Um, you are a I blessing to the people. And uh, what you're doing as far as spreading this information. Now, I'm listening to the information, and I'm checking out the history and everything that has been going on in the world today in the past few yes. years for us to uh, come. But um, I think there's an element that's missing. And All right. I, I heard how you said earlier that uh, at first they stole our land, and then they stole our finances. But I think they had yes. to have stolen something way before they could have done the following two, which was steal the All spirit right. and the mind and the soul of the black image, so-called black image out here. Um, uh, that's basically, you know, the whole point of my, my conversation is that, you know, um, we need to really look at the core point in the situation that's really going on, which is what are they doing to steal the mind? Because they, I, I believe they have to have done, done that first. Okay. Okay. Are, are you following me? Now, they have to have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, here's, here's where I think. You look, you're, you're off track. Okay. I, I don't want to say it like that. Here's where I think you're missing. When I talk about history, I'm way back in 1600, 1500, 1400, coming forward, when there was no peck of wood. Yes, there sir. There was no European. Yes, All right. sir. So now when he came on the scene, we had no knowledge of him. And we well, felt, most of us, felt that we needed to help them because they was eating raw meat and hollering at the moon and causing the black plague. Now, they taught yeah. you in school. They jumped on it so fast, you don't even remember the year or you, you know it was in London. But the black plague went across Europe and killed thousands and thousands of them because they were so dirty yeah. and nasty, it came filth. So we That's thought it. fit in order for us to live on earth with that nasty, filthy piece of crap, we had to educate him to wash up right. and do certain things. Now, during but that period of time, once he, once, I'll, let me say this and I'll, I'll let you go. Once, okay. during, in that period of time, once he realized that he wanted what we had, he began to deal with our minds. Yes, sir. You're totally yes. correct. That came first. Okay. But we were, right. we were way back in history as it came forward. And once we started having sex and creating that daggum mulatto, and he used right. the mulatto to get closer to us and to steal from us and then set up right. all the things that I've been talking about tonight, now you can see why we're in the position we're in today and why they are killing us because we're not citizens of their country. Exactly. Or did I get uh, to that yet? Okay. No, Maybe but I, I didn't get that far yet. I totally All right. where you're going with that. But I, I would like, I, like All right. to say, we can't forget now the whole, the total history. All right, you're going, yeah. you're fading out again, brother. Come on, okay. come on back okay. and fade now. All right, how's this? That's, That's good. good. Okay, I apologize. Yes. 
Um, I was just saying we cannot forget where they came from and how they came about. We can't forget the whole history okay. of what's going on and what has happened. I mean, we can't forget the Yakubian experiment. We can't forget uh, okay. the the, Earth, the Edwin. Uh, if that's the name, Edwin. You have to turn your computer uh, speaker down for getting the feedback. And I'm sorry. And tell him, Beth, tell him, I haven't forgotten any of that. But when okay. I teach, I try and teach, I try and teach what I believe is a following process that people can follow, and then they can do that research that you're talking about and, and be sharper than me. I don't know everything. I never yes, said sir. I knew everything. No, so no, no. what I want you to do, I'm agreeing with you. I, I don't agree with you. I don't have a problem with it. Because a lot I'm of you know, know more than I do. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. I was just saying the basis go of ahead. my conversation. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just saying the basis of my conversation was that um, we can't forget uh, what has happened, what is going on, and what we are under. I believe that because of what we have done in the past, how we came about, we've created a certain type of, uh, I can't call it an omen or a well, curse would be better. As far as okay, done, we have to I deal with Okay, I totally because agree. Looking, I totally I'm, agree. I'm looking, well, I say that because I'm looking at the games that's being played and how they, I understand what the Constitution is. Now, part of it, they made uh, a contract with us. All right, Ben. Ben, yeah, yeah. Ben, cut him. You got. We got to cut him off because I can't hear him. But I think okay. he said gangs. The ga- the gangs that's been right, uh, right. Uh, all this crime. Okay, let's deal with that. He wanted. Did you say gangs? Yes, sir. G A N E S. Okay, okay. The gang. Okay, of- let's deal with that. All right, let's deal with that. Now listen, brother. When you create a monster known as a Negro, there's no telling what he will do. Now, let me give you a scenario that might just knock your concept out of the box and back in the box, and that is this. You take a a large box and make six rooms in the box, open box that you can look down in, and you're going to take cardboard and make six rooms. You're going to put water... Water and uh, and food in every room. You're gonna put white six white mice in each room, but there are exits where they can go to all of the other rooms. Now you know from some research that, for example, that a mouse needs one ounce of water and one ounce of food per day. So you're gonna put make sure every day they get one drop, one drop, one drop, one drop. They're going to play and love and kiss each other forever. So now, the second week, you're going to put two, three-thirds of a drop of water, three-thirds of food, and all of that, same way, all the way around. And then you're going to wait. When they play now, they're a little air irritated. They're a little you know, they you know, you can see that they you know, they're just a little irritated. They playing, but they're okay. Next week, you're going down to a half. And I guarantee you, when you get to a fourth, they're gonna be eating each other. Do you hear right. me? Yes, sir. This is a scientific fact. They're gonna eat each other. Now that, with your is- knowledge and wisdom, I I want you to take that box and put it in any black community in the United States. Boom. Put it in there. You can take any benefit that that peck of wood gives us and use it as water and and food. For example, we'll use food stamps and alcohol. We do the same thing. Once you give them too much alcohol, to overbalance the food stamps where they can't buy the food, they're going to start shooting and killing each other. This is by design, brother. We're not doing that because we don't know what we're doing. 
Each one of these wow. communities in the black communities across the country are controlled by Peckerwoods that don't give a damn about you. And niggas, right. don't get me wrong, it ain't all it, blacks. It's, I mean, all whites, it's niggas. So I don't okay. like to talk the way you talk that gangs, crime, and all of that. We, we got to stop doing that and live together. We'll never do that as long as we're controlled by them Peckerwoods on the outside that dictate what goes on in the box. No, don't, don't you get me it? wrong. I, don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying anything about uh, let's live together and all that. All I'm saying is for us, the people, to look at what's really going on and to really see the core okay. that's existing. Okay. So let's and do the same. Okay. Let's do the. Okay. Let's do the same scenario. Okay, we're gonna put fine. kindergarten books in, in each. Okay. We're gonna put kindergarten books in each one of these rooms. Okay. But everybody else is in first, second, and third grade. You done created ignorant people. Here's a here's a forty year old man that has a kindergarten education. What can you do with that man? Well and if he comes out of this box and go over there to that box that they're living good and he sees that, he cannot communicate with that because he don't have the knowledge to do it, so all he can do to eat and sleep is to steal, murder, and go through all the changes. What? Oh, this is my design, brother. This is how they trick us. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. And what I'm saying again, and you kind of confirm what I said, which is this is part of a game that they are playing amongst us. You got to speak up, Carla. We can't hear you. Okay. How he can come in so clear? How can you come in so clear that all of a sudden you went back in the tunnel? What are you doing? Um, Are you switching back? I'm in a funny area. I'm I'm in Georgia right now, so, so <laughs> oh, okay. that's where I'm calling from. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm in a funny okay, area. Funny. That's all I can say. But I'm trying to get it right. All right. But all right. Um, I just want to express my my opinion, which is once again that kind of confirms what I'm saying as far as part of the game that's being planned. But now in life, what we need to do as people is to understand. You, yourself, and what's going on in life as far as knowing how DNA flow, knowing you as connected as be, being connected to God, um, knowing all these things, and to be able to have common sense out here, which I know a lot of us don't, but to have common sense to look at the situation and say, hold on, something is going on. If DNA exists, and what is DNA? DNA is all the knowledge that we would ever need to know out here in the world. So as far as taking influence so, upon the white man to give us direction in life, we don't have to do that because we can look at what they're saying and, and, and see it as being silly and saying, no, that ain't the way we do. See, I believe we lost okay. our culture and who we really are and how they took everything that was good of us and switched it around to something bad so we would start hating it later. That's all part of the game. I agree. I, know all the games I, that they I, I, to- yep. I totally agree. I don't have a problem with that. None at all. None. Okay. I don't have a problem. So I well, agree with you 100%. I, I think that's what we need to address is the real core problem, the real core situation. Mm. Uh, but but look at it like this, brother. Look at it like this. Don't try to think you have the answer because we all are no. studying. I study every day. And I'll ask right. you one one question. We never okay. heard of DNA until they convicted uh, O.J. Simpson. We may have never Hello? heard of it. We'll be sure. We no, may have never heard. You ain't, I'm positive. Yes, I'm positive. You, ne- you never heard of it. I never heard of it until well, O.J. Simpson's trial. And that's true. I agree, but at the same time, right. stop, right at, at stop, the same, right stop right there! Stop right there! Stop right there! Stop right there! Stop! Stop! Now listen. Right. If you only heard about it during O.J. Simpson trial, and they used it to convict a black man, why are we okay. taking DNA as being the truth that everything is in your DNA when they told you during the trial we don't know? They said, "What is that black stuff over there?" They said, "We don't know nothing about that right now." We don't know nothing about this right now. We don't know nothing about that. All we know about these lions over here. Right. So now, all of a sudden, less than less than fifty years, 
Everybody say, oh, DNA, uh, it's your DNA. We're going to put you in jail on DNA. I don't buy well, that. Well, well, the thing is so, that nevertheless it, nevertheless, it has always been there. And what I was going to say is no. that we may have never. All right. Hello? Oh, yeah. I'm here. Okay. I was going to say that. Uh, how, can you, how can you say that? How can you say it's always been I, there when nobody knew about it? Well, that's the thing. I, I want to finish what I'm saying, which is we may have never seen it. All right, go ahead. We never, we have may yep, have, yep. we may have never heard about it, but we sure have felt it and we've known because we have this certain thing inside of us, which is called the inner voice, and things that talk to us. Oh yeah. And you know, we can okay. sit back and we can meditate. We can uh, we can connect to the gods, and connect to our ancestors. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Would you agree, if I agree with you, can you agree with this, that that's your interpretation of DNA? That's what you believe. I don't believe that. But okay? nevertheless. So we can't start a conversation. What do you mean, nevertheless? All right, go ahead. One thing, I can guarantee, go ahead. One thing I can guarantee what? is that at some point in your life, something inside of you has said something to you. Either you listen to it or you this. Okay, so that's, all right. that's what I'm talking Let about. Me we tell all you what have that was. That. Stop, stop. Let me tell you what that is that talks to I, me. My God. My talk God to talks to me from the inside. Not DNA, not Jesus, not all that stuff hanging on the wall. None of that. Everything I get me. that's on the spiritual plane comes from within. And it's not DNA. Now, that's what I believe. All right. I have a right to believe what I want. Would you agree? I think I got a right. Yes, sir. That's true. That's true. All right. So, all right. So, let, we got to work. We got to act. We got to teach from that base, brother. Everybody don't have to agree with me. And I give you an out not to agree with me. But I give you evidence enough to go research, make up your own mind. I don't shove nothing down your throat. I'm not going to tell you DNA is this, DNA is that. I'm not going there. Right. We got a lot of people that was let out of jail. We knew that from these trials, these last three trials, we know that they cheat. We know that the prosecutors are not honest. We know the judges are not honest. And we know that the, that the, that the lawyers are not honest. So what if it, what if they had to put us in, into a new realm of thought so they come up with this DNA and say, oh, we just released nine brothers that was on, on death row because DNA said they didn't do it. Well, they knew that when they put them on DNA, put them on death row. Right. <laughs> that ain't no big deal. You see what I'm saying? Yes, right, right, they, right. Knew, they knew that, that Wilson... Guilty? They know them cops are guilty. That's why they had to cheat in order to get the rulings that they got. They know Zimmerman is a murderer. They had to cheat, withhold evidence, and fix the trial so he could get over. You well, dig it? So why yes, would sir. I want to believe anything that they say? Well, can I? Can I have I to do my own research. This? Can I? Can I leave right. you with this? All right. Yes. You have to speak in the phone. We cannot hear you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, uh, Miss Betty. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? I'm good. A little better. Okay. Okay. At the end of the day, real quick, what I want to say is that we have to look at the question, which is, why is this being done to us amongst all the races out here? And you must have been here the first part of the show. Ron has been telling you. Say that again. You are God, brother. You are a I, God, I, and you I, don't know it. They know it. I know it. That's why they're I, doing it to us. But don't okay. say you don't know it when you ask the question to leave it with me. I know I'm a God. Now, a little God, but I'm a God. I'm a righteous man. They don't like righteousness. They can't live among righteousness. So that's why they pick on us. That's why they do to us what they do. The only successful blacks are those that turn on their people and turn on their ancestors. That's a cardinal sin to turn on your ancestors. You got to answer to your creator. If you turn on your mama, your grandma, your great grandma, any of them women you turn on and talk all that nasty trash of that B.I.T. ain't this and all that book, 
You're going to hell in a handbasket, mister. You you might be rich when you get there, but you're going to hell. <laughs> right, right. I, I totally I understand. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Call All back right. next Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I wish he could have come in clear because I could have worked with him. But he yeah. was cool. Yeah. He was cool. And see, I got a, a knack of just nitpicking when he said certain things. And when he mentioned DNA, why would we want to fall in love with DNA when they control all of DNA? I don't know any black lawyers that went and got a DNA and got somebody out of jail. I haven't heard of it. I'm not saying that it didn't happen. But all the time, they got these Packerwoods on, on Front Street talking about, oh, yeah, we, we went on death row and we freed 10 of them. Okay. They were innocent when they went because the prosecutor had to cheat to get, the, to get it. And, and hear me clear. This is real. This is clear, Biff. Okay. The only, crime, the only crime that a sovereign can commit, there's only two of them, right. murder and damaged property. But our prisons are loaded with stuff. From stealing a bicycle to uh, cocaine and heroin. Everywhere. So when they turn somebody loose, they know they wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Don't tell me DNA released it. You kind of you kind of dig well, that. Well, I think what he was trying to say was our powers is in the in the DNA. And the DNA okay. is our is our, our cellular structure. Uh, I think that's where okay. he was trying to go. Okay. What if I tell you that your power and structure and spirit is in the devil? Would you want to hear that? Well, you know what? Because when I turn <laughs> devil around, I get live, and everything that they tell me that's bad, it usually be the opposite. So, yeah, I can believe that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You tricked me, Bev. I don't do you like that when I talk. <laughs> but you're right. You're totally correct. All right. We gone over <laughs> You're running me off the air. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. And okay. maybe we have to continue because I didn't get to all of the three and why they do to us what they do, that, what that brother was talking about. Because once we get off the path and we know our children are off the path, we know mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And we claim we can't do anything about it, but they disrespect their their elders more than anybody that's on earth. Our children do. Yeah, they don't give a damn about their mammy, their pappy. They don't care. And these young boys is beating up their mom and daddy, stealing from them, and all that stuff. What else is supposed to happen to a mother than go to hell and get caught and go to jail? But I was told the European was put here to stop us from killing each other and fighting each other and put us back on the path of righteousness. Now, you can take that any way you want. Okay. I believe that. Okay. I believe that. So I when we to, come back when we come back next Wednesday, we can pick up yep. where we left off today. All right. Okay. That would work. Okay. Thank Beautiful. you, Ron. And I appreciate, I appreciate you. And I'll you. talk to you next Wednesday. All right, hold up. Okay. Uh we gotta do two things. Number one my oh, email address is, is yeah. ronmarkshow at yahoo.com. Anyone that wants to send me a donation, you can do it on my website through PayPal. $10, $5, $1, it doesn't matter. I need all I can get because I do a lot of research, and I want to bring all my equipment up to snuff. And number three, I'm on every Tuesday and Wednesday and Saturday. Okay, you Tuesday, on Tuesday at eight at eight o'clock. Okay. Wednesday with you at six o'clock. Okay. And and Saturday at four o'clock. Okay. Eight, six, All and right. four. Yes. Okay. And you can come to my website on each of those days to see who I'm doing the show with, such as tonight, you can see me on my website talking yes. to Beth. Wednesdays I do a thing from Texas. On okay. when, I mean, on Tuesdays. Yep. On Tuesdays. Okay. And, yes. So. All right. Until and on Saturday, next, you uh, you you doing it from Detroit. I, yes, I do it myself from Detroit okay. on Saturday. Okay. All righty. All right. All right. Okay, I appreciate Ryan. it. I appreciate Love you. Love and peace. Love and peace to you.